Strap on a big hat and learn a 72 step one simple trick for getting a girl to look at you. It's Lars and Halleck, it's time for another edition of PUA Holes. Today, we'll be looking at David Riker's Speed Seduction Manual. Now, if it's anything like William Riker's Speed Seduction, this is gonna be fucking terrible. In our society, it is the men who are the fortunate ones. In our society, we share the responsibilities and the pleasures equally. Don't you find me attractive? You attract me like no man ever has. But will you still respect me in the morning? Mm, I hope so. Right, Who is David Riker, you might ask? From the looks of him, he looks like an Applebee's manager that decided to set up a seduction-related side hustle. He's affiliated with Ross Jeffries, whoever that is. I'll be sure to keep him in mind for another video sometime down the line. Also, I imagine him talking like Frank Caliendo's impression of John Madden from Mad TV. If I find out who's responsible for booking me on this, I'm gonna kick him in the ass! <laughs> that might just be me. Okay, the title page. It's geometric constructs, so you know we're in for a down-to-earth and common-sense take on interpersonal relations. Because that's what we all took away from the mystery methods boring in atomic models. No, I'm not letting this go. A structured, linear approach to the full understanding and use of speed seduction and related technologies and influence and persuasion. It's not a philosophy or training method, it's a technology. Every time I do one of these PU assholes videos, I think that the autism cannot be topped. But we literally have Robbie the Robot programming technologies into himself to do seduction. Ahem, <clears throat> let's move on. Many men through no fault of their own have grown up to be adults and have had little instruction or assistance in a very important area of their lives. The idea of simply communicating with and sharing experiences with the other half of the human population, women, that's actually true. So of course, the problem of simply communicating with women will be overly complicated with needless obfuscation. So guys, read, learn, study, apply, have fun, get out there, and good luck finding the woman or women of your dreams. Women. You can't do that, that's bigamy. And that'd be big of her, too. The main goal of this product is to provide a good all-around set of teachings about speed seduction to develop and use structured ways of collecting and categorizing the material to help get this material, and there's a lot of material here, into your mind. So he's basically admitting that this is going to be rigidly structured bullshit. If he breaks out into a seduction flowchart, I'm leaving. In this section, I want to address, why do we need a model? Why do we need a structure like this? I realize it's a tremendous wealth of material, but there seem to be so many bits and pieces of it that I couldn't make sense of it. Maybe this was something that was unique to me, but I found out more and more that there were other guys that had the same challenge. Well, yeah, I mean, those other plans are full of meaningless obfuscation and overly rehearsed scenarios, but this one's totally different. When I finally worked with this information enough and figured out a way to really organize it all, like put a structure on the information and get a real understanding of where one thing built upon another, that's when I really got it. When you're using this in the real world, I don't want you to think of this as some kind of flowchart or something. It's not like you're going to go out into the field and be like, well, okay, I'm in step number two, step section A, need to go here and do this. I'm going to hold you to that, Dave. To understand the structure of the mind, there's something I need you to do. It's your first written exercise. I want you in your workbook to write down specific things that women do right now that you don't understand. Oh yeah, by the way, did I mention that this thing has assignments? So what does this have to do with anything? See, we're going to talk about the human mind now, and we're going to go into the fact that most of you have been dealing with communicating and addressing a part of the human mind that's not in control. What we're talking about now is the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. So then he discusses the stupid triangle graph. This is a very crude representation of the human mind. Look at the triangle. The top is much smaller than the bottom. The top is the conscious mind, and the bottom is the unconscious mind. I'm pretty sure Dave Riker is not a neurologist. Now the primary focus of dating being the conscious mind, you can see why a lot of guys lose the mark. A lot of guys, you know, they want to bathe, dress nice, have a nice car, but when it comes down to it, a lot of times women will say that a guy can have all the attributes, but she'll say, I didn't really have that sense, that spark with him. So according to him, the subconscious is more powerful, and to an extent he's right. But the question is, how do we tap into the unconscious? What you can also do is maybe create a symbol that represents something in someone's mind. You see, the interesting thing is when you associate a feeling or an idea with a symbol, what you can do is that if you have the symbol in front of you, you manipulate the symbol, 
and you can manipulate the feeling. Ah, oh, God, I know where this is going. But then he changes the subject completely. Roles. The subconscious understands roles because roles are part of who we are in the animalistic sense. Think about it. There's roles like the hunter and the huntee. What about the role of somebody who is intimidated? You got a woman who's so extremely attractive and you walk up and you're just overwhelmed by how beautiful she is. That's a role too, and it's not working in your favor. So in other words, if you act like a simp, you'll be treated like a simp. Wow, it's amazing how quickly I sum that up without pretending to be a brain surgeon. What about other roles that might work in your favor? What about the role of being the interesting guy, the suave guy? Okay, those are roles too. You can take on those roles as well. Yeah, speaking of pretending to be things you're not. Oh, and let's not forget the hypnosis. Yeah, really. Fractionation deals with the fact that the more you take somebody into a trance state, the more effective that state tends to be. Let's say you're talking to a woman and you're talking to her about something lighthearted. Then you talk about something profound, that's interesting, that really engages her subconscious mind, and then lighthearted, and back and forth in a sense of time just drifts away. And she can imagine certain things and then, a minute later, you're going back to lighthearted again. That's fractionation. Now remember, we weren't supposed to be doing stupid little rigid seduction plans, but now we're doing a rigid little seduction plan. To his credit, he also does discuss the importance of rapport and congruency, but then again so did mystery before jumping into that attack pattern alpha horseshit. Tools and resources. Nothing says a tool and a resource like a layered square. But you see, each section is a tool that you can use in a hierarchy. To sum this nonsense up very quickly, section 1 is tonality and embedded commands, whatever those are, trance words, and kino- oh, oh god. It's the same shit as that mystery method. Section 2 is anchors, physical tools and gestures. This is essentially using body movements to create a Pavlovian response in a woman. Yep. It is that sort of touch her arm when talking about exciting shit and then touching her arm will make her excited stuff. We are reaching levels of autism that we didn't think possible. Level 3 is conversational frames and themes. Yes, conversations have to follow a logical progression. If you need to have this explained to you, you have a problem. Or in other words, it's the same stuff that I always say about having a wide base of knowledge to talk about. Just written by a spastic weirdo. If you actually tried to talk to somebody about this, they would probably think you were actually retarded. Demonstrations. This is where you do handwriting analysis and palm reading. It's tick crack, Larson. It really works. <laughs> Level 4. Frame of mind. Being confident, in other words. Why was this not the first thing? I have no idea. Beliefs and cognition. If you have the proper cognitions and beliefs, it is easy to have a proper frame of mind and state of consciousness. You don't say. Level 6. Who you are and the life you lead. Oh, so in other words, being an interesting person. I could have told you that. So basically, levels 4, 5, and 6 are common sense things like being an interesting person and knowing how to talk and be confident. Levels 1, 2, and 3 are stupid seduction robot crap. Chapter 4, The Process. Oh boy, here comes the shit. The first step is what I call step zero. Living the life. Yes, this is you. Designing a life that allows you to meet more women, that allows you to be sociable. That is an important part of this, and it's important for you to consider that in terms of the development of your skills and the application of your skills. Wow, this is actually sensible advice. The advice that a martial arts champion brain surgeon helicopter pilot will probably get laid more than an unemployed lard ass. Maybe this won't be so bad. Step one is the opener. God damn it! He does give another rare nugget of good advice. If you don't like going to a club just for the sake of going there, then you're not going to be able to meet women there. Meaning, can you go to a bar or nightclub and not meet any women at all but still have fun? Do you enjoy going clubbing? If you can go there and not meet a woman and still have fun, that's good. Then your chances of going there and meeting a woman will be increased. But if you don't like it, if you're not enjoying yourself, and the only reason you're there is to meet women, what do you think that does to your mindset? Actually, I really do agree with this. But yeah, other than those rare diamonds in the rough, it's not great. Bar graphs are not necessary for seduction. <laughs> Then he gets into kissing, and of course he splits it into three types. Guys, it's not that damn hard. And with that, the book peters to its close. So that was the Speed Seduction Manual. You can buy it for $200. And no, I didn't. 
I got it through <laughs> other means. I certainly hope David Riker found a solution because his strapping middle manager physique and middle manager Joseph A. Bank wardrobe is clearly not getting him women. But considering the sheer cloddishness of his prose, I'm gonna call BS on all this. But you know, I don't blame him for trying to hawk this book for that much money. I mean, I imagine Applebee's doesn't really pay all that much. I'm Larson Halleck, keep on training and keep on fractionating.